As I was going to work a few days ago, I just had to stop and look at this beautiful sky above. You know what? In fact, for some strange reason, I have been taking many pictures of the sky in the last few days. I don't know. Maybe it is just a phase I'm going through. However, I did get an idea of what my next video should be. An airport. But nope, not this one. Well, at least not for now, as this is LaGuardia Airport. However, before there was John F. Kennedy International Airport, which opened in 1948, and even before LaGuardia Airport, which opened in 1939, there was Floyd Bennett Airport, New York City's first municipal airport, which opened in 1931. Kites and balloons were soaring high in the sky for years and people even jumping with parachutes. But in 1903, the Wright brothers made the first controlled flight and the age of aviation was born. The 1920s was a golden age of airplanes and there was much excitement happening out in Long Island. It is from there that Charles Lindenberg took off the Roosevelt Field for his successful non-stop flight across the Atlantic Ocean to Paris. On the other side, there was Newark Airport, which opened at the end of 1928, but that's in New Jersey, and actually very quickly it became one of the busiest airports in the world. Hence, New York City was in need of an airport, and this was the site that was chosen at that time called Barren Island. It was actually made up of many small islands, I believe over 30 islands, which had to be connected together and filled in for the Floyd Bennett Field to be born. The airport was named after Floyd Bennett. He was born in 1890. He was among the first small group of men who were trained and certified as naval aviation pilots. Had to sound really cool a hundred years ago, and I'm sure this gave them full bragging rights at social events. He served in World War I, and afterwards, in 1926, he, along with Richard Byrd, were the first ones to fly over the North Pole in a plane like this one, Fokker Trimotor. Although this is somewhat disputed by some, whether they were really the first ones. But regardless, due to this, his reputation was enormous. In 1928, fellow aviators who were attempting a non-stop flight from Europe had an emergency in Canada, and Bennett, although very sick himself, went on a rescue mission, and unfortunately he died along the way due to pneumonia. Later, the USS Bennett destroyer, which served in World War II, was named in his honor, and of course, the Bennett Field Airport here in New York City. The airport was pretty advanced for its time, and even had lights at night for possible landings and takeoffs. It is from this place that Willie Post took off to be the first pilot to fly solo around the world. Pilots such as Amelia Earhart, the first female pilot to cross the Atlantic solo, or Howard Hughes, pictured here, landing in Bennett Field after going around the world in just under four days, breaking the previous record of Willie Post, which took over seven days. As you see, until the end of the 1930s, this was a vibrant and energetic place to be in. During World War II, it became a naval air station, and among other things, it was used to train Navy pilots. 
even though it was decommissioned and transferred to the National Park Service in the early 70s, it still served as a reserve center until 1983, and the Coast Guard used it until the end of the 90s. I believe today the New York Police Department Aviation Unit still uses it for its helicopters. Many people come here fishing, and I actually asked somebody if they caught some fish, and supposedly it is a good spot. The sand itself is pretty nice to walk on, although you need to be a little bit careful if you're doing so without your shoes, as there are a lot of small twigs and decomposing cord grass. Therefore, just be careful where you are stepping, otherwise you could get hurt. In the back is the Marine Parkway Bridge, which is a vertical lift bridge. It goes up and down in order for the boat to go underneath it. And I love the sign for the bridge itself because it's not just any old sign, but if you look here on the side, you could see that actually the bridge itself is sort of like 3D, just like the date of 1936 at the bottom. So it's really kind of cool to see it this way. A lot of work went into making this sign. Here are the hangars. There's a total of eight of them. Four of them on the other side have been converted to indoor sports like a gym, basketball, indoor hockey. Two of them, hangar one and two, have been fully restored and have natural gas metering stations. And the last two hangars, hangar 3 and 4, well, as you see, nothing was done with them. They really serve as storage, which I really completely do not understand why. Such a historic place and beautiful if restored, as you just saw. Um, I just don't get it. Maybe it's because of the rather isolated location that no one wants to invest. I don't know. Honestly, if I had the money, I would so buy it and bring it back to life, just like in the movies. But since I don't have a plane, nor do I know how to fly one, in fact, I'm kind of scared of heights, I would have to find a different use for it. Ooh, you know what? Like a ballroom with the 1920s and 30s theme music. That would be pretty cool. But this being my fourth YouTube video, I think I would stick with my daytime job for now. Plus, I just love to torture, um, teach students. I love this decoration right here. I think it's so cool. Another reason I do not understand why this place is not fully restored or repurposed. You got the room to do it. You have buildings and a cool logo. You got the foundation. Here is the visitor center, but this was the control tower. Here are some pictures from the inside back in the days.
And here we have the Floyd Bennett Gardens Association Community Gardens. And there in the distance is Lower Manhattan and the Freedom Tower. As you see, a lot of it today is not being used. I mean, if there are cactuses and small bushes growing right through the cement, well, that tells you something. This is a wildlife habitat. Many people actually come here to observe variety of birds. And in fact, I mean, I came here pretty early in the morning and there was actually a handful of people doing so. And check this out, a cool vintage soda machine. I'm not a venting machine expert, so I have no idea from what year this is, but I'm guessing the 70s, simply based on how it looks. And the wood-like panel at the bottom. In the 70s, you saw this in many places. On walls, on cars, and so I'm guessing maybe on vending machines as well. But since there was actually a lot of people around me, I did not want to shake it and turn it and look for some sort of a label to see what year this is from. Ah, driving on the former runways and taxiways. Cool. Although I would suggest to keep your eyes wide open because I saw many people come here to learn how to drive. You know, this is actually a good spot to do so. And as you see, there are skid marks. So I'm sure that more than once there was some racing or burnouts happening. You know, I remember actually I had a student maybe six, seven years ago who actually got seriously injured here on a bike and wasn't able to finish the semester. So speed is not something to take lightly. Here are some abandoned buildings, but it does give you a good idea of how this place used to look like back when the Navy was here. Here is another location for fishing, but it is where people come to launch their kayaks into the water. It is a beautiful place to relax. Although what you see is a low tide. Once you have a high tide, most of this is actually underwater. And this is Hangar B. It was built by the Navy in 1945, and it is the site of historic aircraft restoration project. And when someone is inside working and restoring airplanes, it is actually open to the public and you can visit. Inside, there are many great historical aircrafts, and I would love to show you them closely and provide some historical background but that would really make this video twice as long, probably even more than that. So it's something I really want to leave off for a future video on this channel. Like always, I hope this short video was enjoyable and I was able to provide some useful information. If yes, then please subscribe and come back next week as we will explore another great place this time in Queens. So stay safe and adventurous, and I will see you shortly. Take care.